Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 SNL cast members that fell off the map. I don't know what that part means. <laughs> For this list, we're looking at Saturday Night Live cast members that didn't make a lasting impression off the show. Do you have any fond memories of these forgotten SNL stars? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, Paul Britton. Hello, my name is Ed Vincent. I'm a sex education educator, so you can call me Sex Ed, that's me. In just a season and a half on SNL, Britton crafted some truly memorable characters, such as unqualified intimacy expert Sex Ed Vincent, the overgrown Lord Windermere, and Croatian comedian Goran Funky Boy Bogdan. Ooh, Funky Boy! He also provided memorable impressions of Johnny Depp, Ron Paul, and James Franco. Doing so much stuff. <laughs> it does seem like a lot of stuff. So, why did Britain leave the show halfway through his second season? While the initial report said that the split was amicable, in an interview with Kevin Pollack, Britain's SNL co-star and friend Taryn Killam indicated that Britain was let go by the show. We wish we could see Britain, as his comedic energy stood out during his short run on SNL. Plus, his uncle is Bob Newhart. Number nine, Gary Kroger. One, two, one, two, three, four! weren't exactly the best era for SNL, with creator Lorne Michaels departing for a few seasons and the show receiving some of its worst reviews during that time. Writer and performer Kroger lasted a while, joining the same year as Julia Louis-Dreyfus, who played Marie to his Donny Osmond in one noteworthy sketch. After leaving SNL in 1985, Kroger kept working in show business for some time, hosting various game shows like The Newlywed Game. Now I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions and I'm looking for matching answers. Matching answers earn points, coupled with the most points, how about a second honeymoon? However, he's since branched off into other ventures, including two unsuccessful runs for Iowa political office. Hey, they can't all be Schwarzenegger. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Oh, don't be sorry for me, Tim. It's probably a good thing. Number eight, Denny Dillon. Success on other stages doesn't necessarily translate to success on the SNL stage. Case in point, Denny Dillon, who received a Tony nomination shortly after her one season on SNL. That was an event. Another talented performer who had the misfortune of being on the show during a tumultuous time, Dylan had a few characters in her time, such as Pinky Waxma or salon customer Nadine. Well, if that's the case, Rowena, you can take out that last curler and cancel next week's appointment. Yeah, Nadine. After leaving SNL, Dylan acted on the HBO sitcom Dream On and lent her voiceover talents to animated series such as Bobby's World, Batman the Animated Series, and Courage the Cowardly Dog. Oh, hello. Who are you? She has also continued with her theater work and since come out as gay, making her SNL's first gay female cast member. Were you were you bitter when that thing ended? I, that was a tough season when you were on the cast. No, they had changed I, I producers. I was bitter because I, I knew that they were doing what they needed to do. They changed producers and made changes they felt that were necessary. I was a little sad, but I get over it. Time heals everything. Number seven, Melanie Hutzel. Delta, 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 can I help you, help you, help you? Melanie Hutzel had a pretty good run on SNL, lasting for three seasons, but she didn't make a long-term impact with characters like Dee or Jan Brady or her Mayim Bialik and Tanya Harding impressions. Who's hosting the show next week? Yeah, do they need someone to host? I mean, we could, you know. After leaving SNL in 1994, Hutzel spent most of the 2000s away from entertainment, focusing instead on raising her children. However, Hutzel has since returned to our screens, appearing in films with other SNL alums such as Bridesmaids, along with recurring roles on shows including Transparent. Who doesn't appreciate a good comeback? Number six, Jeff Richards. If the name Jeff Richards doesn't ring a bell, how about Drunk Girl? I'm totally going on spring break this year. <laughs> I've been going on spring break since I was 12. Richards played the inebriated character numerous times on Weekend Update. He also did skilled impressions of diverse figures like Bill O'Reilly and Dustin Hoffman. Not doing that, I'm not doing a song. <laughs> 
Richard's sketch comedy experience predated his time on SNL, as he was previously a featured player on Mad TV. Come on, do it! Stake me down, please! <laughs> uh, I guess he's busy. While he might not be at the same fame level as Will Ferrell or Adam Sandler, Richards has found continued success in the world of stand-up comedy. Hopefully he doesn't have to deal with too many drunk girls in the crowd. You'll be okay, you okay? Number five, Tim Kazarinski. Tim Kazarinski is another fairly forgotten SNL cast member, lasting for three seasons in the 80s. However, he got a solid number of impressions under his belt, including a few that wouldn't fly by today's standards. I, I wanted to start things off with that humorous trick because tonight's topic is rather grisly. Kazarinski also created memorable characters such as Dr. Jack Badofsky and Mr. Landlord on Mr. Robinson's Neighborhood. It's Mr. Landlord! Hello, Mr. Landlord! <coughs> what the? Cut the bull, will you? Your rent's six months overdue. It's a summons. He reportedly had a conflict with SNL producer Dick Ebersol and left the show for good in 1984. Who was that man? Match. I can't take this anymore. Some might argue that Kazarinski was gone before his time. Real corny, but it works. But hey, he's also in a few Police Academy movies. Number four, Jerry Minor. A featured player for the show's 26th season, Minor apparently never quite found his footing on the show and was let go after his first and only season. Yeah, that was ridiculous. If you watched SNL back then, you might recall Minor's Rap Street sketch or his Al Sharpton impression on Weekend Update. Tell them, Jesse! <laughs> Since leaving SNL, Minor has popped up on various comedy series such as Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Curb Your Enthusiasm, and Key and Peele. Hey, those are some major accomplishments too. Is everybody gone? Gone, gone. Number three, Yvonne Hudson. Although Hudson was only on the show for a single season, she definitely made SNL history. Will you shut that? As the first black woman on SNL, joining and leaving in the show's sixth season, Hudson helped to pay the way for cast members such as Ellen Cleghorn, Leslie Jones, and Ego Wodim. You right. Before being inducted into the cast as a featured player, Hudson appeared a few times as an uncredited extra and continued to pop up occasionally until 1984. After that, Hudson seems to have left show business for good. Wherever Hudson is now, we hope she realizes just how important she is. Number two, Terry Sweeney. To our little miracle. <laughs> Another history maker on SNL is Terry Sweeney, who, upon joining the cast in season 11, became the first openly gay cast member. Not only that, but Sweeney was also the first openly gay male actor on network television. Before joining the cast, Sweeney was a writer on SNL. In his one season on camera, Sweeney tended to be given stereotypical roles, with plenty of drag for impressions like Nancy Reagan, Joan Collins, and Joan Rivers. Ladies, I'm sorry, our time is almost up. It's been wonderful having you on my show, and lots of luck with your new book, Vadim. I hope it does as well as my new book, Enter Talking. <laughs> After leaving SNL, Sweeney wrote for Mad TV and appeared on the assassination of Gianni Versace, American Crime Story. And most importantly, he was a true pioneer. Oh, what a relief. I was worried we were gonna have to get along. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Don Novello, remember Father Guido Sarducci? And I did the same thing. I decided to one day quit my job, start a new church, and name myself the Pope. <laughs> Denitra Vance, the second black female cast member, sadly passed away in 1994. And she thinking, she thinking, tis but thy name is my enemy. Thou art thyself though, not a monogoo. What's a monogoo? <laughs> Beth Cahill, who didn't love the Delta 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 girls. Your eye makeup looks so good. That is such a good color on you. Thanks. It's my mom's. She works for Lancome. I hope to God they don't test on animals. Those big companies don't care about anything. God, your earrings make your whole head sparkle. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Lorraine Newman. You're such a nice little girl. I know it all the time. Thank you. Here's your pea soup. Maybe now we can be friends, huh? That's what do right. you say? Second.
When you think of the original cast of SNL, names like John Belushi, Chevy Chase, and Gilda Radner likely spring to mind. However, one cast member who deserves more recognition is Lorraine Newman, who was in the SNL cast for the first five seasons and provided the show with great characters like Sister Serena, Connie Conehead, and Vicky. What's two and two? Four. Just checking. <laughs> Newman would also avoid repeating roles, which might have hindered their popularity. According to Newman, she went through some difficult times on SNL, but she's since enjoyed a fruitful post-SNL career with plenty of voiceover and writing work. And the coolest thing? She was once approached in public by John Lennon and Yoko Ono. Here's to Lorraine Newman, our favorite forgotten SNL star. God, creative people can be so forgetful. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.